hi good morning super quick last minute easter make that is what we're doing it is a crochet tutorial today and ta -da! here is our little bunny that i'm going to be doing now yes you guessed it it is a chocolate orange cover or as we've discussed before a bath bomb a pair of socks whatever you want to cover the little gift balls you can get it does stand on its own quite nicely so you don't actually have to have your orange in there but i just thought it was a bit of fun nice and quick to make and if you're anything like me you're always last minute anyway and it's sometimes nice to do something last minute it brings that excitement back to what you're doing so we're going to go top down and make this little guy don't forget uk terms it does make a huge difference if you're not sure on the terminology grab yourself a conversion chart off google or you will find if you've got crochet books there's usually a conversion chart in there so it's not too bad so we're going to go and get this little fella done and we'll see you in a second well here we are with little bun as you can see it's quite a simple one this to do it's got this little bob tail on the back there you don't even have to do it in the two colors i did it this way to sort of make these look like something i've not added i must admit i was going to do some little flowers i've not got around to doing that but this is sort of to look like grass and he's sort of sat in the grass got a little flower on its head now i have used a safety nose as well here which is something i don't generally use I usually sort of stitch the detail on but i had these little pink noses so i couldn't resist it but yes i would generally just stitch across using some pink double knit yarn something like that so he's done in a few pieces but not too complicated again safety eyes here you do need to think about who your recipient is if you're going to use safety eyes so please be careful when you're doing that sometimes it's best to sew the eyes on again though i think that probably these are safer than beads so you've got to be careful there but yes i would have a tendency to sew eye details on with sort of a yarn a thicker yarn to sort of make it stand out but again a little flower detail optional whatever you would like to do it could be have a little bow tie it could have a or scarf it could have anything I've done a basic design you can sort of decorate it up to how it's going to suit yourself I'm just looking at the shadow here we've got some shadow going off I have my light to one side here I can never make up my mind I'm a better with light without light oh it depends what the sun's like outside it's like now the sun's gone in so I could actually open my curtains which would give me more light but then I can guarantee the sun will come out <laughs> and it'll put lines everywhere it's it's a nightmare in fact i tell you what i am going to pause it and i'm going to open my blind i'm back that is a little bit brighter um still got in the shadow oh, it just purely depends what time of day you do it unfortunately in this room but we're going to get on with him anyway i have stylecraft double knit yarn just bog standard double knit yarn great quality though be careful with your yarn slightly different thicknesses etc etc I'm going to be using a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. Obviously, I have my orange in there and a little pot of accessories. I have a stitch marker, a little carrot stitch marker for him. I thought that was perfect. These are my safety eyes, my needles and my pom pom maker. Obviously, different ways of making pom pom. And again, the pom pom, I suppose, is optional. But I think it does look cute. So let's get on with this. We don't need the green for a while. We do need this. I'm going to take him out of the orange and i was showing you know i mentioned it does stand on its own look you see they stand really well because they're quite solid so if you're wanting to use it just as a decoration on the side after you've eaten your orange you can still do it or save it for next year's easter to put other surprises in things like that so we'll pop in just slightly to one side we're gonna keep the orange out because we're going to sort of try sort of measuring it as we go it's all right i'm just looking if my sound went funny there i'm trying to look across at something oh bear with me I was saying I had not sewn any flowers on. I've got these little silk flowers. Oh, that's fallen out. If you wanted, you could sort of throw, sew them on and things like that. You don't have to do them on all because it's like spiky grass. But yeah, that might give it a little bit more colour. So that might be something I will do with it. Oh, my flowers have dropped out now. I put them in this tube and every time I open the tube, they all sort of like bounce out because they squash down. And then when you open it, obviously, they bounce up. Oh, there's another one escaped. So we'll put that to one side because I don't want them at the moment because I'm not going to show you that bit. Uh, but we do need our white yarn. And let's stand him back up. Bless him. Stand there, bunny. So where's the end of my yarn? It is there. It is an Amigurumi-based piece of crochet. So most of it you're going to recognise. Again, don't forget those UK terms because it will make a difference. We're going to start with his body to fit over the orange. I'm going to try it again. I keep messing about with the light. What's that look like? Is that any better or is that worse? I don't know. That looks quite good. 
less shadow i think it's actually my light i buy a light to make it shine you know be able to see better and i actually think it makes it worse sometimes so here we go slip knot onto the hook not too tight we need to be able to move it a little bit and we're going to start with our two chain which is how i start my amigurumi you can start it however you prefer i know a lot of you do use the magic ring magic loop whatever it's called i don't like it that's why i say it like that i find this is easy two chain and then straight into the first chain how can that be any more sort of simple really so in we go with six double crochets remember uk double crochets so that's one two three four five and six okay so we've got our first little ring going up i'm going to jump straight into half trebles now i'm not going to do a slip stitch join i'm going to go straight into the stitch because half trebles you can do amigurumi style trebles you really do need to stop start and join but with half trebles you can just keep going around in the spiral and so yarn round for a half treble into our first stitch the first one's always hard for this it's always like awkward to get into it's like on an angle for some reason right i've got in there i pull it through i have three on the hook and i pull it all three through all three that is a half treble but we're going to do two half trebles into each of those six so we're going to do it with 12 stitches so i need to do another one in there so that's my second one in the first one if that makes sense now we're going to do two in each of the remaining five off we go so we have a two in number two we have two in number three in number four and in number five so let's just do a quick check i'm okay with stitches so i've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten oh eleven so i do need another one let me double check that one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven i missed one we need 12 basically so i now have 12 half trebles on that last round we're going to increase again now if you want to pop your stitch marker in at this point you can do it can sometimes make it easier when you're not concentrating on other things as well you i know what my brain's like it's all over the place so we're going to do two half trebles again in each of those 12 so we have 24 stitches right here we go so two in number one two in number two remember these are half trebles in number three, two in number four, two in number five, in number six, so we're halfway around, two in number six, two in number seven, two in number eight, all half troubles. Two in number nine. In number ten. Number eleven. And our last one, two in number twelve. So that, as I say, gives us 24 half trebles. So you can see how it's starting to shape. We're now actually not going to do any more increasing. You will find when you use a half treble on these that you do get a better stretch as it goes round um i know i mentioned in the last video i did about the book that i've got coming out in july so it's up for pre-order on amazon if you want to have a look um and they are chocolate cozies that i am doing and a lot of them you will find the body is done in double crochet which is a tighter stitch but sometimes i think it is required for sort of the neatness and if you've got more detail which the ones in the book have got more details um, you do need that for changing over and things like that. So is our orange. Let's have a little check. So you can see roughly, if you're checking on your orange, you can see it sort of covers that top bit. We're now going to continue down to where we get to the grass. It's about here. And that is actually going to be seven half treble rounds. So I am actually going to put my stitch marker in. I just thought this was a rather apt stitch marker <laughs> with it being our little bunny. Um, I know when this video is going out, we've only literally got a week. Today is Easter. But as I mentioned, sometimes it's nice to do that last minute. Or if you've forgotten to do something for somebody, 
you've got a bit of scrap yarn it's so easy to throw it together chocolate oranges are really easy to get hold of in the supermarkets as well this one the reason i've done this i wasn't going to do it but i picked this one up and it's actually got what were the little tiny little smarty bits chocolate orange smarty type things inside the chocolate and i've not seen them before so i thought it was a bit different so i'm quite looking forward to getting into this but obviously i've got to finish my cover first so i'll put that there and we're going to count our seven rounds i know some of you now will just sort of whiz off and get your seven rounds done i will see you after seven if that's going to be the case otherwise I will be chattering along, or if you don't want to listen to chatter, you know what you can do. You turn the volume down, get some music playing, and enjoy your crochet. So off we go. So we have 24 stitches. If you've not got your stitch marker in, these are all half trebles, remember? So it goes through all three are half treble. If you've been doing a lot of trebles lately, you might slip into doing them. Watch yourself for that, because I know I do. If I've been doing granny squares or something, I sort of autopilot into trebles rather than halves these are all tra halves I need halves for these so round and round we go with our halves seven's not actually that many rounds is it I'm trying to think where i got this tiny stitch marker from i can't remember it's very cute and it's perfect for this time of year i do as if i haven't got enough stitch markers um but i do want to get some more because i want to sort of try and theme them to the seasons um and then i can sort of have a different stitch markers for different occasions and things like that oh did i knock the camera then i hope i didn't can't really tell from this angle because i'm looking at the crochet it's weird i have the camera looking at the crochet obviously but then i'm sort of looking under the camera so i can see the work so i'm sort of crochet on quite a strange angle actually when i'm doing the videos so i have my pen here faithful pen and paper always and that's marked round number one off we go with round number two after we've got to about four i'm gonna have a look at it on the orange you will have to stretch it a little bit it's good if it's a little bit tight on the orange now because like most yarn i mean this is just an acrylic yarn but most yarn will stretch so when you're taking something on and off on and off for example it will start to stretch so it's sometimes a little bit better if it's a tiny bit tight not too much i mean obviously if it's way too small it's no good either but because of yarn differences, because of tension differences, you do need to keep trying it on. If it is so tight, it's just not going to happen. You might have to throw a couple more increased rounds. Well, rows or rounds, whichever way you're doing it. Um, basically, if you're doing an increase, it's just two stitches in one. I, w I wouldn't worry about that. It it's simple enough to do, but you need to be doing it early on rather than later so you see it's curling round which is good that's the shape we want so we're almost there told you it was quick this one so that's two off we go again so i think maybe this one and then we'll have a look at the orange see how it's sitting i know most of you now if you've been doing these with me you'll be get used to sort of how i sort of adjust things how i double check it um i know over the years of doing it i've had a few people say oh it doesn't fit my orange at all unfortunately without me seeing your yarn and the hook perhaps and your tension it's difficult for me to sort of try and help you i do try and do my best and if you have any queries i will make suggestions if at all possible um, but sometimes it is purely a case of to keep trying it on the item it's same with the doll hats when when i make them i can make say i'll make a smart doll hat in maybe this sort of yarn and it fits brilliant and then i've gone and bought another type of yarn still double knit perhaps and and i've made it and then it doesn't fit and i'm like oh why so that's why patterns sometimes can be a little unpredictable even ones you're buying in shops i know in the past i've bought like a children's cardigan pattern for example my tension is relatively tight when i'm doing things like that and you know it came out too small which was a little disappointing but it's not the pattern's fault it, it does come down to the yarn that you're using so off we go so that's three look at that we nearly oh i was going to try it on the orange wasn't i let's try it on our little orange here so little stretch oh that's gonna be that's gonna be good can you see it's a little tight because it pushes up but i'll do it that way can you see but that's good because then it'll stretch over as we go so off we go again with our round four i haven't actually timed how long it takes to make these uh i'm pretty sure it'll be quite quick though 
so if you've got a spare hour or two hours and like i say you've not done that so last minute gift for somebody or you're wanting to add to your gifts or maybe table decorations because i know some of mine are going to come out as table decorations because i'm going to do we're going to do a little easter afternoon tea and the grandchildren are coming around so i want to decorate the table up with uh, little bits and bobs so i think my uh, cozies were going to come out there if you've not seen my last video you might be wondering why i'm calling them cozies and not chocolate orange covers that is purely because the book uh the publishers decided well we sort of talked about it and sort of i thought it was a really good idea actually when they suggested it calling them chocolate cozies um because they do fit other products i think the chocolate orange ones are predominantly chocolate oranges but like the cream egg ones you've got different types of eggs you get eggs at different times of year so it's not just cabras um you've got research you've got lint uh like the ferrero rocher ones i've done you've got all sorts of little truffles there's all sorts of things that fit them so they've become chocolate cozies let's mark that one down so that is four so it over halfway actually aren't we for a four now again i have now tried to put everything that i've done like this if they're chocolate cozies if i want to put the word i have now got a playlist that says chocolate cozies they still come up in some of the other playlists because i i wasn't sure how to alter that bit um so my playlist of chocolate cozies on here now contains all the things i've done that cover chocolates basically and I say it doesn't have to be chocolate, does it? It can be all sorts. I mean, the small ones, or they could even be like um, jewellery box covers. You know, it's got a little ring box or something like that. There's all sorts you can use them for. And they're just pure decorations if you want them as decorations. I love this stitch because it grows quick, but it's quite compact. I think a treble gets a little bit loose if you're not careful and i've just been making a doll dress and it was following somebody else's pattern and they are trebles i'm not sure it looks a bit loose for me so i might have to i don't know why i buy patterns because i buy patterns make it don't like it completely change it but um it's great sometimes though because i've learned a couple of bits off this new pattern it's one of the japanese ones that i've got and it's it does it's it's different some of the techniques i like the frill on the edge and things like that that's round five we've got two more to go so yeah, I'm pleased I did the pattern because it gave me some other ideas. I then, like I said, completely changed it halfway through. So I've not done the pattern that they had, but I'm still really pleased I did it just to sort of, you know, it's nice to have something different, isn't it? Where are we? We're on six, aren't we? Just had to look at the piece of paper then. I've forgotten where I am. That is why I have a piece of paper. Just a little time check. I'm back. Here we go. I'm I'm fine. I'm fine. I, I'm just one of these people who stresses a little bit if I've got to get somewhere off a certain time. So I'm always like constantly checking. So here we go. This is the little hair. There's not much to it. Obviously, it is sewn onto the body afterwards. So we're going to start with our two chain and then our six double crochets into that first one. So we have one two three four five and six obviously we need some increasing and it's going to follow the same pattern as usual we're going to do two double crochets into each of those six to give us our 12 stitches so here we go our first one so we have one and one and then we have a two and a two three and three four and four five and five and our last one for this bit and that is six and six we should now i'm just going to tighten that bit up don't pull it too tight you don't want to break your yarn but just tighten it up so to fasten that hole up there now we have 12 stitches still not enough we need 24 so off we go again two double crochets we're still double crochets for this one the whole of his head and his ears are double crochets so here we go. So two in our first one, two in our second one, two in number three, in number four, number five, number six. So we're halfway there. Number seven, number eight. My pussy cat's mowing again. <laughs> Number eight, number nine, 
10, 11, there's two in every one remember, and 12. So we now should have 24 stitches and that is as much as we're going to increase. So it's stitch marker time. Just slide it in there and we've only got four rounds, four double crochet rounds. That's all we need to do. So it's not going to be that much really, is it? Off we go. They are shorter stitches than a half treble. So they do take a little bit longer in one respect. Well, it's not that they take longer. The stitch probably is about the same. But obviously the growth of the work that you're doing doesn't go as fast when they are double crochets. I still think a double crochet is one of my favourite stitches. But not if you want to do things quick. That's the only problem with it. Get a bit of yarn out. I know something I've not said you need. You need a little bit of stuffing. A little bit of toy stuffing for his head. Yeah, just in there. Or if you've got some yarn, if you've not got toy stuffing, it's only a small area. You can actually pop the white yarn in. That's another way of doing it. So let me mark these off and behave. So that was one. I keep throwing this poor bunny away. So stay there. Off we go. You will see it's starting to curve round in a second because we're just doing one in each now. So it starts to shape the head around. I will put the safety eyes in with you. As I say, you may not be using them, so don't worry about that. But I will sort of pop them in and show you what I've done. That's almost round for number two. So we're halfway there for his head. I think we're actually doing really well for time. There we go, number two. Now, I know not everybody celebrates Easter. This does not have to be an Easter present. If you know somebody who loves bunnies, you can do it for that. It's just cute. They don't have to love bunnies. It's just a cute bunny. Um, so, yeah, it's an any time of the year gift. It doesn't have to be a particularly celebratory gift. It can be just here you are is a little friend's gift, something like that. Um, so yeah, it's, it doesn't have to be Easter. I know I'm putting it up as Easter, but I am also very aware that not everybody celebrates Easter. So it's just a little gift. It's just a little bunny gift with some a chocolate treat or, or whatever you're going to be popping in there. So I hope it doesn't put people off when I put that it's like a Easter bunny cover sort of thing. It is just, in fact, I might just put it as a bunny bunny chocolate cozy i think i might just do it like that so that's our round three so only one more round to go <laughs> i can hear the cat rattling at the door now not be long pippi and you can come in during the day <laughs> she's whining at me now uh during the day when i'm working in here she will just she just comes and says she doesn't bother me um but occasionally if there's certain yarns she will decide she's jumping on them so I prefer her not to be near certain things. If I'm making commission pieces and things like that, for example, I don't want the cat near it. She usually goes to bed mid-afternoon. She goes and sleeps on our bed. So that's usually the best time to be doing things like that. So this is my final round. A few stitches to go and we're done. There we go. One, two. I'm going to go one more. I'm going to do my slip stitch. Okay, now I need to leave enough yarn here to be able to sew onto the head. I sometimes don't, and then that's a nightmare because you've got to add yarn in. But think about how much you need. So I've done that quite long, I suppose. But that is enough to sew, more than enough, to be honest, to sew onto the body. So stitch marker out because I'm going to need it for the ear. So you can imagine, I've got a little head now. And I'm going to turn my page over because my ear is on my other page. It's a strange sentence. And again, it is so simple to do. You will need to, I'm just going to do the one for you guys. And as I said before, I'll leave you to do the other one in your own time then. So here we go. It starts exactly the same. Slip stitch on, two chain, and we have, I'm double checking that because I know I changed the numbers for this one. We have six double crochets. We do have six. One, two, three, four, 
five and six. Now we are doing an increase, but not as big as the one before. This yarn's going to get tangled up, isn't it? If I don't get organized, let's just take some of the yarn out. My needle's dropped off there as well. Right, so we have our six stitches. We're going to increase, but we're only going to increase by three. So we're going to do two in our first one, one in our second one. And that combination is time is three times. So here we go. We do two in our first stitch. That's our first increase. But then we're going to do one in our second one. That's set one. Set two. We do a two. We do a one. That's our second set finished. One set left. That's all there is. We do a two. And we do a one. And that's it. We've increased. I'm just tightening that little bit up and now we're going to be doing i'm checking the counting we're going to be doing five rounds of those nine stitches now you can see the ear here if you want to make it a longer ear or a shorter ear that is fine you can sort of play around with these five rounds now that we're going to be doing because as soon as you've done the five we're going to be decreasing and we'd be about here so you need that little bit of decrease bit so this is the middle section i'm doing now so it's up to you how long you do the ear I'm not going to put, I mean, I did say I was going to put the snitch marker in. I'm not going to because it's going to get in my way. I think I'm not, I'm going to leave it there. But if you want to pop a, a marker in, if you've got a smaller one, that might be as easy. But five rounds, nine stitches. So we'll just count the nine stitches. I'm going to do it that way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight and nine, round one done, mark it down. You can see it's already curling, so I need to push it all out. It makes it easier to work. If you don't, it, it makes it feels like you're working inside out. It's very odd. Right, nine stitches then. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So round number two, nine stitches again. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Round three done, over halfway. So two more rounds to go. So nine stitches in each round. One, two three four get a little bit more of that yarn out four 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 don't forget and five six seven eight and nine last round look how quick that was nine stitches one two three four Five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So that's our sort of the length of my ear sorted. I'm going to do a couple of decrease rounds now. Um, so obviously that makes it a little bit longer, but this is, as I say, you need to decide on the length you want here. We're going to do two together, so two double crochets together, then seven stitches. So you're just going to do that once. Because that is, oh, we've only got nine stitches, so obviously that adds up to nine. That will decrease us by one stitch, which means we should have eight stitches after it. So two together is, you do the stitch, but you don't finish it off. You go into the next one, don't finish it off. We have three on the hook, pull it through all three. That's our decrease. It's done. Now seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So we've already shrunk a little bit, but only by one stitch. What we're going to do now is we're going to do two double crochets together, then just two double crochets, so individual ones, and then two double crochets together, and then two individual ones. So it, we're doing the set twice, so it'll bring us right down. So two together. Some people like to miss the stitch for that. It's up to you how you do it. That's just the way I do it. So two stitches two together and two stitches we're going to do one double crochet round now 
so we now have down two we have six stitches we've gone back to our six haven't we so we've got one two three four it's a little bit harder to get in now but we can do it five and six and my last one i'm doing as you can guess i'm doing a slip stitch in we go now like i mentioned with the head we need enough here not much really because you're only sort of just attaching it here but you need a little bit to make sure you can attach the ear to the head so that's our white yarn out of the way obviously you do need a second ear as i have just done the one i will do my second one later as well so pull that through now this bit here i'm not going to be stuffing the ear so i'm not worried about it but the bit that we started that pulls this make sure this isn't going to come undone if you feel a bit nervous about it you can sew this in i'm quite confident that that's quite tight so i'm not going to cut it off short i'm just going to cut it off like that and then i'll just push that bit inside the ear so you've got your ear done so we've got our ear there now as far as putting the details on as i mentioned i do have these little safety things now make sure you know the instructions these eyes i got i don't like them as much as my previous ones because my previous ones uh you were sort of pushing on that way and it made sense these i have to push on that way and i feel they're a little bit bulkier so i'm not so sure i like that but they're all different you'll be used to different ones as well and this little one these i got oh, so long ago i don't know whether i would buy them again i think on average i would sew on details but because i had them i thought well i ought to use them i'm going to say that's the back of the head now as you can see it's sort of there so I'm going to position, make sure you position everything before you put the backs on, make sure you're happy with them. So we have our little nose there. I think that's OK. Eyes again. I mean, if you wanted to sew little whiskers on, think where your eyes are going, because I think I did my eyes side by side, which I like, but then realised I couldn't do any whiskers. So let's have a go at putting these a little bit higher, see what they look like. Oh, I don't know. I think I actually like the eyes side by side, side by side, his little nose. There we go. That too wide this is why like i say you always check before uh, you actually pop your backs on that's a bit too wide isn't it messing in there and in there how's that looking it looks a bit like a snowman at the moment not that the snowmen have pink noses but yes i'm happy with that so i then turn it inside out you can see the little bits the little spikes that i'm going to be pushing these on to so the smaller one is for our nose so i'm going to get it in position and i'm going to push well i will if it doesn't slip all oh, right doesn't want to go on come on you can go on Sometimes I know this nose is a cheaper one that I got. They, uh, yeah, it's really not worth investing in the cheaper ones because they don't want to go on. I'm going to have to move the position. That's it. So it's on the table now. I think it's because I've got the other eyes there as well because they're getting in the way. Oh, you don't want to go on. Oh, you've gone on. No, you haven't gone on. Why is it not wanting to go on? I might be sewing this eye on course this i tell you what i'm gonna put the the eyes on okay so i'm gonna leave that i say i wouldn't necessarily recommend getting them i just had them that were all so i thought i'd use them there that's better they go on quite nicely i don't know it feels really hard to put the fastener on so if in doubt when you're using safety eyes just don't use them it's it's not worth the risk of them coming off because they might be safety but you never know right so i'm actually going to leave it like that now if i'm going to actually embroider i will get some of my sort of i've got some like this color pink double knit yarn i'm just going to go over like that i'm just trying to think of where my other rabbit is i did that on a different rabbit i think it was last year's tutorial um so if you have a look under the cozies you'll see i have done it on another rabbit's face where i've just sort of gone across like that and it looks super cute so we'll put that to one side now as far as attaching i know i mentioned this before but this might be a new video for you uh you might be not one of the people who've watched my others i position it sort of where i want it so again it looks like a very strange snowman doesn't it at the moment so i'm happy with that and then i'll get my thumb and i'll hold it down like that and i use the orange as a base to sew on so obviously i will need my yarn and i will need my wool needle which is here I like quite a sharp wool needle it gives you a smaller eye here but it helps you sort of sew things on and what i want you to do is you're going to sew 
three quarters of the way around to here. So we will have a little hole. We will pop our stuffing in and then we will continue to sew round. Again, if you want to sort of check on that, my other videos where I've got these, I know my snowman, um, I'm trying to think who else I've got recently. Uh, oh, my little sheep, I sewed his little head on in a different position, but I sewed that on. So basically, I'm going to follow, because my thumb's there, I'm going to follow each sort of line of my half treble. So I would be picking up half treble stitch and a complete double crochet stitch. Half treble, double crochet. So it sort of goes over. In fact, I will show you some of that. I was sort of reluctant to sort of sew it on because I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that nose yet. I think I will stitch it on, but there again, I want it in the same as the other one. So I might just have to go halfway on my sewing. So what we got here? Got tangled up. Oh my out. That one's the one that we started with. You can you just use that as a bit of stuffing. Just stuff it in there. So this is how I stitch on. I pick up my half treble. I pick up a full. Now when I say full, you know you've got your two pieces. I'm picking up both pieces. Now my thumb should be keeping it in exact place. Make sure you check my halfway around though, because I have done that in the past and then um, realise the head's not in the centre if your finger's moved or something like that. So you do need to watch it. So where are we going? Let me just double check what I've got there. All right, so I'm going to go for double crochet now. You can do it whichever way around you do. I think I've missed a stitch there. Um, half treble. Double crochet. Half treble. Now, can you see it makes quite a nice stitch? Your join isn't very obvious at all, then, and that is the whole point of sewing things together. You don't want necessarily for it to look sort of as if there's gaps or if it's untidy. You do need to sort of make a little bit of effort on the stitching up because you can be a most beautiful crochet or knitter, and sometimes then when you sew it up, it can spoil it for yourself if you're not careful. So it is important. It does look funny, doesn't it, at the moment? So you're going to carry on round, as I say, stuffing carry on sewing down i'm just not because i need to decide what i'm doing with that and as far as the ear is concerned we have the same system decide now i've done him as a lop eared bunny you could actually if you want in fact i might do that i might have one lop ear and one with the ear stuck up with the ear stuck up you might need to put a tiny bit of stuff in because it might not stay there but yes i did a little lop rabbit so the ear came down and all you really need in for that again onto the needle you're doing about two stitches because look can you see it's only a couple of stitches holding it in place so i just held it and stitched like that the flower detail this is st stitched on you can glue entirely up to you i'm i like to stitch all my items on i'm not really a glower i like to stitch and then obviously for our finishing touch we have this now this is my clover uh, pom pom maker absolutely love them this is a 35 it says there i think that means it's going to be a 35 millimeter pom pom because it's about three and a half centimeters that makes sense i know i have trimmed it down a little bit afterwards if there's any extra bits usually trimmed down if you haven't got one of these i would recommend you get them they are lovely i mean they come apart so when you take your pom pom apart that's what that's for basically you're winding wool around one side winding it around the other you put it together, follow the instructions for the cutting. Please make sure you do the right bit. I did it wrong first time. And then you have an instant pom-pom. They're really quite nice, lush pom-poms. That's why I like the maker. I can make pom-poms in other ways, but I think these are lovely. And they do loads of different sizes as well. This is one of the smaller ones. I think there's one smaller. I'm sure one of my others is smaller than this as well. So that's all I'm going to do for our bunny. I'm going to finish our bunny off after. Still don't know what I'm going to do with that nose. I'm going to have to have a think about that. I suppose, really, because I want them to match, I really do need to have a fight. I might see what the other little pink ones are like. But if I don't have any success with them, to be honest, I'm going to put them in the bin. I think I might end up just stitching the detail from now on. You might find a better company. There are lots of companies that do these. So you might have a better look than me on that. But I do know they were cheap when I bought them years and years ago. I think that was a mistake. So I'm going to leave it at that for now. Let me pinch this one off its body. And we'll put our other, our finished little bunny. And hope you're going to enjoy making that. 
If you do celebrate Easter, have a wonderful Easter. And I will see you soon after Easter with, oh, it's not going to be long. We're going to be thinking about Christmas, aren't we? And I will see you all very soon. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy my videos, you know what to do. Please like, subscribe and share. And I will see you all very soon. Bye bye for now. Well, I think I just knocked everybody unconscious with the way I hit the camera then. But what I'm hoping to do is sort of splice it together. So there might be a little bit of a funny join there. I do apologise for that. I sort of like flick my hand up and uh, hit the camera as well. Right, let's get on with this. And this is because I was getting too giddy talking about that Japanese book that I've got and some of the other techniques that are in it. So, uh, but yes, I enjoyed making it. I've just altered it all now. So I'll keep going round and round. And as soon as we get to our carrot, there's only one more round of these. Really, you should move your stitch marker up on a regular basis. I've sort of got used to not having to do that. So that's why I don't always use it. But I would recommend you move it up maybe every three rounds, something like that. Because it's spiral, it's not this weird. Because if I say, oh, the start position changes, well, it doesn't really. Um starts the start isn't it but because it is a spiral system it does sort of like go on an angle slightly so it does if you were counting it if you count every single stitch i mean that, that's a challenge for you each round leave your stitch marker where it is and each time just count to 24 count to 24 count to 24 you will see there'll be a very slight difference so depending on what you're making that can really alter things so I do recommend you do move them but I am on I carried on round aren't I I'm on my seventh aren't I I didn't mark six down there's me going oh I've always got paper and pen I have but I didn't do it that time we're going to try it on the orange after this if you don't want to go to the green you would just carry on until you hit the bottom of the orange with these 24 stitches. You don't need any more. There's no alterations, anything like that. You can just carry on. If you want him to have longer grass, you could have stopped before this round. That is why I like to keep the patterns simple because it is then up to you to personalise them and make them sort of right for you right adding little details right i'm going to stop there and i'm actually going to fasten off i know you can change yarn without fastening off this is just how i prefer to do it i suddenly realized i hadn't got some scissors but thankfully there was some on the table so i am going to fasten off okay i'm going to take the stitch marker out i've got a pussycat crying at the door i don't want to risk letting her in because she can be a bit of a pain with yarn little stretch and you can see approximately where it is sitting. So if you wanted to just do him in white, just carry on until we get to that bottom bit. I mean, as far as the green rounds are concerned, I'm just having a look what we got. We got four, it's about five rounds, but that's because I'm actually changing the stitch. That's why it sounds a lot, five, but I'm going to carry on to double crochets now. If you're just doing it just to the bottom, carry on with your half trebles. That'll be fine. So we'll move the white for a second. We will need it for his head and his ears. And let's get on with this green. Love this green. It's a real spring colour, I think. So I have my yarn in position and I'm going to decide where I'm going. Now, I, again, you may just change your yarn without fastening off. I just like it this way. And I'm just going to take it back one stitch from where I fastened off and I'm going to pull it through I'm going to do a chain and I'm going to do a double crochet I'm going to do a double crochet in the next one now as you can see I've approximately done two normal double crochets one spike stitch two double crochets one spike as in individual stitches should I say and one spike stitch you can make it random you don't have to do that you can make it all the long stitches you can make them all the flat stitches, all just double crochet stitches, it's entirely up to you. But for example, I'm going to do one more because I don't think it's very easy for you to see in that position. And then my next stitch, which would be here. Let me find a needle to show you this. Where's my needle? There we are. Now my next stitch would be there, yeah? But I want it to be a longer stitch. So I imagine the next stitch up, yeah? So when I go my work, I'm going in here instead of there. Make sure you don't go back into that though because you'll add stitches. Your next one would be here. So instead of there, you're going to take the stitch longer into the row above. Okay. 
and then back into those now i've decided to do them in trebles i started them not i started just sort of lengthening in the stitch which is sort of the plane here and then i started doing the trebles and i think the trebles work better i will show you what i mean so yarn over remember not in this one in the row or round higher up we go in we pull it through don't pull this tight otherwise it's going to pull it so you can see we've got a bit of movement there yeah so uh, that looks longer there and then I'm going to go two and two. So that is my treble. Now don't go in that one because that's the one you've just gone over is the next one. I'm going to do two double crochets and then look for my next stitch. But then look at the row above, yarn round, in we go to keep it loose. One, two. OK, next two stitches. One, two, just double crochets. My next one's the long one, so I'm doing it as a treble. Pull it through, one and two. Let's say you can do these as random as you want. He's sat in grass. It doesn't have to be exact, especially if you're adding little flowers. It can be very random. So don't worry if you did a three and a two or something like that. It's entirely up to you. So yarn round, up we go, pull it through, pull it through, two. So we've got two more double crochets. Then I'm going to do a long one, so that's where it would be. I'm going into the row above, and I'm going to do a treble. I have a one, and I have a two double crochet. Then I have my spike stitch treble. There's different ways of doing spike stitches. This is just the way I choose to. So again, optional. If you're used to doing it, go for another style. If you're not sure, you can have a look at what I'm doing and see if you like it. So I'm going to have two more. And then my last one would be a spike stitch, which would make sense. I know I did an extra one there because I wanted to show you the stitch. In we go and pull it through. And now we're just going to do double crochet rounds until we get to the bottom of our orange. I have four. OK, because I know I'd said those five. I counted that one. So I'm just going to go straight into that top one. Now I'm just looking. I did start to sew my uh, yarn in, so I better put my stitch mark. Uh, there we go little carrot and off we go with our four rounds of just one double crochet in each double crochet basically now the double crochet as i mentioned earlier is a tighter stitch um than the half treble well it's not tighter it's not as stretchy should we say the half treble and the treble give you a little bit more stretch in an item whereas the double crochet is a little bit more solid so what it actually does do is slightly curve it around your orange as well so which is actually quite good because we want it we don't want the orange sort of dropping out so we still should have 24 stitches unless you've somehow made some <laughs> might be worth checking um but I know it happens because I do do it. So that is round one. I only sort of mark them down this time. So round two. Let's say we've only got four. So on two, we're already halfway round. I do need to keep my eye on the time myself today. Uh, it's one of those funny days. But uh, I'm going to uh, a little show. My granddaughter's part of a like a, a dance group but their performing arts sections doing a little show today so we're going to support them my granddaughter's not doing it she just does the dance side um uh, it's nice it'll be a little little afternoon trip out so it should be quite enjoyable i'm not even sure what it is i think it's like a mixed musical theater that we're going to watch And that is round two. Ding, ding. There we go. I should give him a little number, shouldn't I, for each round? So he could just do a, a little walk round with the number. Maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> I told you it was an odd day. That's how I feel today. So this is round three. And I'm actually going to pause the camera when I get past my four and double check my time. So I don't know whether I'm going to have to split this video because I am running a little bit behind today. And we do have to get there for just after dinner time. It 
can you see something else I do? It's not something I say to do, but it's something I'm aware that I do. It's something I was doing the other day, and I'm like, oh, perhaps I really should say it. As I'm sort of crocheting, say I have done four stitches, you'll see occasionally I sort of like just stretch it. I'm not over stretching it. I'm not deliberately trying to make it bigger or anything like that. Um, I just think sometimes, you know, it just sort of stretches your work just a tiny bit, just sort of like that that's all i do but i've noticed i do it so i had wondered whether people thought what is she doing it's not a technique or anything it's just how i crochet right last round for our little bunny well for his little body anyway the head is pure double crochets so that's an easy one and i'll only do one ear with you today you don't need to worry about doing both of them with me and then you can enjoy your time to do his second one in your own time we're nearly there, bunny. Yeah, I think this make, will make quite cute decorations on the table. Almost round to the carrot. And the last stitch I'm going to do is a slip stitch because that's how I like to finish my work. It is optional. And when you're going to be sewing the ends in, it's not really the end of the world if you don't do one. So let's take carrot out and see how we're fitting on the orange. Okay. I'm just going to pop all these inside. You do need to sew your ends off, of course. But you can see how it's gone a little bit tighter. So now you think, ah, it'll fit on my orange. It will fit on the orange, don't worry. A right, little stretch over we go. As I say it's just getting past that bit, give it a little push, and there we go. Because as I mentioned, this yarn will stretch after a couple of times taking it on and off, so don't worry if it feels a bit tight. So that, that's good, I'm happy with that. So that is his body. I need no more green. I am going to pause the camera and double check my time. 